created and developed by Creatures Inc. and Game Freak Incorporated, and published by Nintendo. Game Freak presents. Oh, how iconic. Hello everyone, this is Sonic Fiend, and welcome to Let's Fiend over Pokemon Blue, my very first Pokemon game that I ever started with. I'm going to be doing this game, but I'm going to be doing it with a bit of a twist. I'm going to attempt a Nuzlocke of this game. And the reason I decided to do this is because of the recent Nintendo Direct at the time of this recording, this is December 9th, which was... Which they revealed that Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow were coming back to the Nintendo eShop on February 27th of next year, which is actually my birthday, and is going to be the, I believe, 20th anniversary of the series. So yes, the original Red and Green came out on my birthday when I was three years old in Japan. And for that, I love it. I love it. So after, as we cycle through all these Pokemon, we've seen Porygon like twice now, Let's... let's get this going. I already had a save here. Now... As the... For those who don't know, the Nuzlocke run, you can make your own twists and turns to it, but there are two general rules. Number one. The first Pokemon you encounter in any area is the only one you're allowed to catch. If you kill it, or if it runs away, then you're- that's it. You can't get another shot. So, if I were to encounter a, let's say, a Wild Rattata on Route 1, and it- and I accidentally, like, got a critical hit on it, that's it. I'm stuck with just my starter until I get another chance at, say, Route 2, or, or what have you. And the other big rule, which is really the make-all, be-all of this type of experience, is if any Pokémon faints, they are considered dead. That is to say, you must either box them permanently or release them into the wild. You cannot heal them again. Now let's see... My name? What is my name? What is my name? I don't know. Uh, should I just stick with Fiend like usual? Mm. Or, no, let, let's... Just for the sake of... Being stupid and silly. I'm gonna name myself Blue, even though I'm technically red. And this douche, this douche, I'm going to call Green, because that is his actual, that is his real name in Japan, and that's what we're celebrating here. So I'm going to pretend to be Blue, which is the, which is the girl of this trio, and no one's going to be named Red, because I like messing with things. There is, for those who don't know, the first initial releases of this game were red and green, which is why the 2004 remakes, I think it's 2004, 2003 or 4, the remake for the GBA were fire red and leaf green. There is a blue version which fixed a lot of things and updated some sprites. There's a blue version that's Japanese exclusive, and that was going to let you that was actually going to give the option to let you play as a female trainer, though, because the Game Boy cart is so, so tiny, I think, like, four megs, they, could re they couldn't really fit another, like, set of sprites into it, and, you know, playing as a female trainer would not be recognized until Ge Generation 2 of Crystal, which is my all-time favorite game in the series. So let's get ready to embark on our journey. I'm so... After Gen 2 and so on, I'm so used to my mom actually trying to stop me from leaving, but no, she doesn't do anything. 
What have you to say, mother? All boys leave home someday. It sets her on TV. Well, I won't let the TV guide my son's or daughter's life. Actually, let's go back and play some NES, or SNES. Time to go! I forget the name of the actual, uh, add-on, but you could play Red, Blue, and Yellow on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And it, the Super Game Boy, that's what it's called. You could play the Super Game Boy on the SNES, and if you played Red, Blue, or Yellow, at least in America, I'm not sure how it worked in Japan, you actually got this, like, neat colored border around the game. What have you to say, sir? Technology is incredible! You can now store and recall items in Pokemon as data via PC! There is at least one iteration of this game- of this guy in every single Pokemon mainstream game, which has something to say about, like, the current generation. Like, I believe in X and Y, which is, at the time of this recording, the most recent gen, Gen 6. What did he say? Say something along the lines of, oh, uh, Nintendo Wi-Fi connection is really great. I can wonder treat people at any time across the world. Is that technology neat? Okay, so Professor Oak is looking for me, but I'm going to be a rambunctious little scamp and go play in the grass. That's right, in, the, in this universe, a 10-year-old child cannot leave outside his home and go play in the, like, the ankle-high grass without a Pokemon, or they will die. Hmm, this green character sure is a impatient little... Well... I have things to say about green in this game that we'll we'll get to that when we get to that. But suffice it to say, when I first played the game, I did not like the rival very much. Not just because oh hey he's your rival, he's like your biggest opponent, but I don't know his like his attitude even today still bugs me. I mean your grandfather is giving you you know something that. You know, most kids, that most kids are, you know, blessed or chosen at random to have. No, you're getting one. And now you're gonna call me greedy, you little shit. Okay, so, for this run, I'm gonna impose some rules upon myself in addition to the main big ones. In this case, rule number three. The starter you choose is dependent entirely on your ID number. So, if you have... the It's the last digit of your ID number, pardon me. So, if it ends in 1 through 3, then it's a grass starter. If it's 4 through 6, then it's a fire starter. And if it's 7 through 9, it's a water starter. If it ends in 0, then that means it's a player's choice. So, my ID number is... Please not grass? Oh, wait. Where's my ID? Do I have an ID? Um... Huh. Or, oh wait, maybe you don't actually get ID numbers till Gen 2, I can't remember. Um... Hmm. Well, my money ends in zero, so I guess that means it's my choice? I don't really see an option or an alternative. But yeah, the other... The other rule I'm going to post by myself is to set the battle style to set. Wait, did it save? Okay, it did. By playing on set style, that means... Usually in Pokemon, if you defeat... Well, in the single player campaign anyway. If you, de if you defeat an opponent's Pokemon and they have another, you're allowed the chance to switch out to, like, counter the typing. Like, let's say, I beat something, I beat an opponent, I beat a flying-type Pokemon for an electric-type, they're gonna switch to a ground-type, so I'm gonna switch to a water-type to beat that. By playing a set, I'm not allowed that option. So just like in, say, actual multiplayer battles where you can't switch and anticipate what your opponent's going to do, 
That's gonna be me throughout this entire journey. So my options are Charmander, which is, you know, everyone's go-to favorite Pokemon. We have Squirtle, also really good. Water type. And lastly, Bulbasaur. Number one, the very first Pokemon ever. Though, technically speaking, the very first Pokemon actually designed and concept was right on. I don't have anything against Bulbasaur, but in this game, because of its dual typing, grass and poison, and because of the way this game is programmed, it gets killed by almost every other type. So I'm going to choose... Squirtle! Because even though I really, really like Charmander, Squirtle is statistically the best type of Pokemon you want for this journey. And hey, it matches my name too. Though it should be noted that, interestingly enough, in or the trainer Red, as we know him, usually like picks Charizard. In the manga, he actually chose Bulbasaur, and the rival had Charizard, while Blue had Squirtle or Blastoise. Even though in Gen 2, he has all three anyway, so... Let's see... I'm going to call this turtle... Hmm... Is there enough characters for this? I don't think there are, so... Naming him, naming him after one of my best turtle friends, I'm going to call him... Mr... How many characters do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, I'm just like short too, so I'm going to call him. Mr. Void Man. And I can get away with that because genders won't be introduced until Gen 2. And Green gets the lame one. Because screw Green. It matches his color, too. Alright, so now we have our super cool, awesome Pokemon. We're going to begin our journey of great- No, god damn it! Here we go! The first of many, many, many rival battles. Trainer Green wants to fight. Is it out? Bulbasaur! Go, Mr. Void Man! Now, I'm not sure how the rules... I don't know how... I don't even know if it, how it would be possible if you did, but I'm not sure how the rules handle actually losing the first, like, rival battle. Because really, you really have no reason to lose this. But even then, I'm not sure if it's counted as a loss, you have to start all over. The, the the requirements for, like, failing a Nuzlocke run are that you have no Pokémon left. If your very last Pokémon faints, and you can't stick it in the box because you have no other options, then you lose, and you have to start all over again. I would use Tail Whip to lower its defense. Yes, I actually do mind the defense in this game, even though the stats in this game are kind of broken, so to speak. I usually do mine them, but because Bulbasaur could just drown me anyway, I'm just gonna keep tackling it and hope for the best. Which is really the best method. See, now look at this. I have... Now my attack is pitifully low. Oh god, it's actually coming down the wire, isn't it? If you can keep spamming growl on me, that'd be great. Just saying... See, my now my attack is like... At its absolute lowest. Oh dear, this could be a problem. Oh, thank you, critical hits. Woo! That's what I was hoping for. Now there are factors for critical hits that sh they have its. Excuse me, the critical hit factor 
has its own formula starting with Gen 2 or 3, I believe. No, it has to be Gen 2. But in this game, the critical hit rate is dependent entirely upon your speed. So that's why a lot of people use Charmander or Charizard as a fully grown. A lot of people use that because Charizard is the fastest of the three starters, which means it's going to get criticals a lot easier. For a second, I was afraid I was going to lose. That would be very, very pathetic. Okay, so, now that we have our first Pokemon, and that we've totally owned our rival, take that. Uh, first we're gonna drop by his sister's house, because his sister totally digs me. <laughs> and I'm going to borrow her map. I think I can... Oh wait, do I... Oh no, I have, to, I have to complete his errand first, I believe. And then I can get the map. So I'm going to have our super awesome mother heal me. Thank you! And then we're going to be on our way. Now the rules I impose upon myself, the set and the ID starter, which I guess doesn't really account for this game, they don't sound like they'd be much, but trust me, later on they will be, and that changes everything. Also, the, the rule where you can only catch the first Pokémon in any given route doesn't really start until you actually get Pokeballs, so... Because, you know, how can you catch anything if you don't have Pokeballs? So let's just go to Viridian City and complete this errand. And then we'll probably call it apart there. Also, I also... Ch excuse me, I chose blue as opposed to yellow, because even though yellow does have the best balance changes and the... And, you know, there are lots of extra little tidbits that coincide with the anime. For example, you actually do fight Jesse, James, and Meowth in, in yellow as opposed to red and blue. I chose this version because A, it's the one I started out with, and B, like, the sprites for all the Pokémon in this game are so radically different than their, like, actual anime or official design. And I kind of like that. Like, the Rotata there looks nothing like how, you know, the Rotata we're used to, for one thing. It's, you know, it's purple as opposed to, you know, the grayscale we have here. Color wouldn't really be a thing for these games until Pokemon Yellow. Which, even then, you needed a Game Boy Color to actually, you know, experience that. But color didn't. Color for the games weren't mandatory until Crystal, which was a Game Boy Col Color exclusive game. Thankfully, I had a color at the time, but I do feel bad for anyone back in the day who had just a regular Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket and really wanted Crystal but couldn't play it because it was incompatible with the model they had. Oh, yeah, we can't proceed to. Third Viridian Force because this guy is grumpy. He hasn't had his coffee yet. Blah, blah, blah. Though I think the actual story is in the Japanese version is that he's drunk. But you know, this is a game for kids. We can't show off alcohol. Oh, yes, I did come from Palatown. I got the Oaks Parcel. Let me. I'm pressing X. As if that were to open a menu. No, it's starting this game. Get it together, me. Oh yeah, the item system in this game. Until Gen 2, you had everything, every single item in just a confined item space of like... I forgot what the limit was. Is it either like 20 or 30? But yeah, if you wanted to store anything, you had to use your PC. There weren't key items or separate pockets for Pokeballs or anything like that. I should be finding some more wild Pokemon just so I can get a little more experience for what's to come. See, look at Pidgey here. Pidgey looks nothing like how it's supposed to. I know why the reason for that is, you know, sprite limitations. They couldn't really fit in a lot of detail. Either that or 
the developers didn't really see the actual anime or the designs that Ken Sugimori had. I believe... Did Sugimori... Was Sugimori there from the beginning? Well, whoever the original one was, they didn't. They weren't really following their idolisms. And oh my god, this Pidgey's actually kicking my ass. Knock it off. Oh, it knows it's Gust. Which would be great if Gust was a flying-type move in this game. Unfortunately, it is not. It wouldn't become flying until Gen 2, but then Pidgey starts off with Tackle instead. Which is... Kinda lame. Alright, here's your unidentified item. I could be smuggling drugs for all I know. The hell is this? I, I killed a rat and a bird. I'm surely talented. Oh yeah, it's a cousin Pokeball, that's right. I wonder if that would go on to become the GS Ball in Gen 2. It's my invention, Pokédex. Not the Pokédex, just Pokédex. Yeah, he just kind of, like, teleports the Pokédex of the table into my pocket, as opposed to actually going over, picking it up, and giving it to me. I'm not sure how that works, maybe Oak is a psychic Pokemon, or he's, like, omnipotent? I'm too old, I can't do it! That didn't stop Rowan! Shit, Rowan's a, ch a former champion, for crying out loud. Okay, here we go, there's the flavor text. Out to her not to lend you one! Joke's on you, she fucking digs me, so ha ha! Thank you. See, unlike... Actually, that's a weird thing, because they're all part of the same family, so... Yeah, Daisy, that's that scary sister name, Daisy Oak. Haha ha, puns. Daisy in blue should... Or green, pardon me, I'm gonna have to break that. Oh god, I'm so used to calling him blue, and I gotta force myself to call him green. Greens and his sister should have omnipotency too. Unless they're just not fully developed yet. Who knows? Okay, so... I'm going to... Heal up with my mother once more. Stop the part here, and when we resume on part 2, that's when the real journey begins. I'm gonna try and keep this... Let's Play playthrough going... Until I eventually... Until either I beat the game, or I just... You know, die and lose everything. Will we make it all the way? Or will I die as soon as we're reinforced? Find out next time in Let's Fiend over Pokemon Blue. Thanks for watching and have a great day, everybody.